Hello, hello everyone. Good morning from Vietnam. <laughs> How are you all doing? <laughs> hi, Laura. Oh, hi, Elizabeth and Sarah. <laughs> Welcome back. Hello, Carla. Hello, <coughs> Anne. Good morning. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> That's why we, we drive in, in the rain. So sorry we're late a little bit. Hello, Maureen. How are you doing? Hello, Liz. Welcome back. Oh, welcome back. Jen is from uh, Missouri. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, oh, Jen. Jen, you're from Tasmania, I see. We, we used to have uh, a lot of guests from Tasmania, actually, in our offline tour. Hello, Lita Pibi. Happy to see you again, Janice. We are back. I'm so, so sorry. It dropped uh, the connection a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> sorry for the connection. I'm going to show you uh, oh, the, the view. <laughs> Not the view, the, the outside, like the garden of this museum before we come in. Okay. Hello. Hello, Sat from New Zealand. Yeah. I think you joined our tour before, Sat. This is not your first time. You made it from Singapore to Vietnam in a few seconds. <laughs> Singapore. Who is streaming uh, in Singapore right now, Liz? Avin, right? Avin, I think. Yeah. Oh, first time. <laughs> Avin, yes. Oh, first time, Sat. Welcome, welcome. And uh, we have our friend. <laughs> oh, hello, Glory. Hello, Mitzi. <laughs> Hello, Irina. Hello, Dahlia. Fee is here as well. Donna, welcome. Donna from Newfoundland. Newfoundland in Canada. Oh, we haven't heard about Newfoundland actually. But uh, you see, it's raining. It's a rainy season in the city. And uh, the rain in this city is actually it's not so intense. So normally, the rain here is on and off. Uh, but it's raining like this uh, for pretty much the whole day, on and off, on and off. Yeah, you just done a tour with him, with Alvin. Oh, Arun, welcome back. Hello, Hadi. Oh, Linda Julia is here as well. Welcome. Hello, Jen. <coughs> Hello again, Joy. Hello, Grace. So if you're new to our tour, then my name is Hugh, uh, H-I-E-U, right? Uh, the word Hugh, it means respectful in Vietnamese language. And um, yeah, Hugh is pronounced almost like huge, actually. And yes, my name is Spring, Spring, uh, like a season. And uh, welcome to our uh, tour today. So uh, Hugh and Spring today will show you a, uh, a museum, actually. But in this museum, they display around 400 artifacts and they also display about a lot of ruins, uh, statues, sculptures, and actually they also have a lot of miniature as well. Most of them are ruined during the war and after the war, the government, they would collect them from different regions in the central and in the southern of Vietnam 
and then they would brought them to this museum. So this is actually the largest museum in Vietnam that display all the artifacts about Hinduism and about the Cham culture. The kingdom that used to live here in the city and they live an Indian way of life like that. Oh yes, huge, a huge. Yeah, like huge, huge Jackman. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dalia. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> So uh, it's going to be 30 minutes, I wrote, but uh, maybe longer. Let's yeah. see how it goes, all right? Because nobody here, or no monkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so please ask us many questions that you have. The more questions that you have for us, the happier we are. And you can ask us about Vietnam, about Hinduism, about anything. Uh, second thing is, uh, we're going to be, like, have a slow tour today. We're going to walk, we're going to zoom in all the ruins for you to enjoy all the details and uh, we're gonna talk mostly about hinduism today so without further ado let's get started oh welcome back uh, dean he told me yesterday for the first time welcome welcome keith hello penelope <laughs> uh if you are new to our tour uh, please keep in mind that spring and i we have two ebooks uh, we actually pass our two ebooks on the very top of the chat and we may pass them again in the end of the tour but uh, right now you can scroll all the way up and save our ebook well it's a very basic ebook about recipes and uh, like food in vietnam like that but when you save that ebook you can have our information so let's see how we keep in touch this is where we are right now uh, actually i'm gonna show you our whole country first so welcome to Vietnam. <laughs> this is Vietnam, a uh, country with like the S shape. And as you see, it's, it's very uh, long, it's kind of a bit uh, skinny in a way, but we are right in the central of the country. So last month, Spring and I, we were in this city, a city called Thừa Thiên Huế, right? Or Huế. And right now we are in Đà Nẵng city. So Đà Nẵng, right in the central, and they are known as the third developed city in the whole country. And as you see, uh, we have a lot of red, the red dot, and like the red uh, temple or the triangle here. Those are the ruins. Those are the place where the government came and collected all the artifacts, and then they bring it to this area. And by looking at the map, you can see most of the ruin, most of the red dot, they are located in the central and in the a bit in the southern region as well but it's near the coast near the coastal area so by the way spring and i we live in the southern region in the city ho chi minh known as saigon the most developed one in the whole country and our capital is hanoi hanoi the red one is located in the north oh, the name is cham uh, yeah. arun Di tích Cham tại Việt Nam. The word Di tích is mean the ruin actually. But let's say in English they say Cham vestige. Vestiges in Vietnam. Okay, that's in there. And please keep in mind that this is a very special museum. This is actually the first museum that was built by the French in our country in Vietnam. And that's the reason why. If I show you the the outer layer of the building. You see that it's a French architect. It have a touch of French architect, but the inside it display all the Hindu artifacts like that. And they built this museum in the year of 1919. Uh, I'm sorry, they built it in the year of 1915. Yeah, it's a long time ago, but even until now today, the government they still go to the ruin area and collect those artifacts, and they would bring it to the museum. So uh, we're going to show you a similar statue, but uh, right here is pretty dark. So because we are the only one in the museums uh, right now. So keep in mind that during the tour, we're going to stop for a few seconds, turn on the light and, uh, and continue with our talk like that. This is a statue of a worshipper. So it's simply a human being, a worshipper. Uh, and those statue, the material at that time, it tend to be terracotta or sand. Uh, I'm sorry. It tend to be uh, terracotta or they use clay to do it like that. 
And now let go inside. Oh, thank you, Jin. You are very kind. <laughs> thank you for the tips. So this is what the whole museum is about. The whole museum is dedicated to uh, to the period of the Chamba existence, and it's happened the roots. It could be dating back to as far as the year of 192 AD, a very long time ago. And at that time, the indigenous people, the Chan people in Vietnam, they actually they live an, an Indian way of life like that. So most of these statues that we see today, it will be Hinduism and a bit of Buddhism as well. Oh, hello, James. <laughs> so this statue, as you see, the ruin is not that, uh, let's say, it's not that beautiful compared to the modern statue anymore, right? But uh, it was here for a long time ago. Those statues, it were collected from the period of, from around the 5th the fifth century up until the 15th century in our country. And you can see the hand, it got chopped up. But this statue is the statue of Shiva. Shiva, the god of destruction. So right now, actually, we're going to talk about the Holy Trinity in Hinduism for you to like, get a sense of what we are about to see today. We're going to see the three men God today in this area. So now we're going to zoom in for the detail. So what do we see over here? Well, it's very, if you're new to uh, Hinduism, you will see that they actually in Hindu as a religion or as a culture, they have the whole idol making process where they actually they take care for the mudra of the uh, of the god. As you see, this elephant over here, the uh, the mudra of the elephant it needs to hold in a certain way, and they will chant a mantra. They believe that it will bring the positive energy to the idol, and then they actually make make the idols, and then they worship them. So the statues that we are seeing, it is the statue of Ganesha. Ganesha is an elephant, but it's believed that he is the son of Lord Shiva, of the god of destruction that we are just showing you. And uh, here, moving to the next set of uh, ruined statue. One of the very uh, unusual things that you also see about this statue is that the head, the head of this statue, it got chopped. It's got uh, it lost for some reason, and you see, because Vietnam, we suffer from the two very big war. We suffer from the French colonial, and then we have the war with the American as well. The thing is, during the French and Vietnam War, the French, when they collected these artifacts, they actually took the head of the statue away. You see, and they brought it. They brought it to Paris. So that's the reason why. A lot of these statues, you will see that they actually lost the head, like that. So now I'm going to zoom in as well. And the name of these statue, they are the god of direction. So uh, normally they will take care for like the geomancy aspect and for the harmony in the family, like that. And that name, it have a Sanskrit, like Indian name, you can say. And their name is Agni, Varuna, Vayu, Kubera, and Ishana. That's their name. But uh, I know that without the head, it would be very hard to, to recognize who is who, like that. And this is something uh, special. You see, this is like a uh, pedestal, like a, like a place where people could display it either some food or something to offering to the God, like that. So, I hope the rain doesn't affect the south, but right now, we're gonna go into the next room and continue our exploration with this ruin today. But this is the last uh, shot, this one. You will also see that normally, <coughs> in the bottom of the pedestal, there was a lot of statue of human beings, and do human beings are something that we call an aspara. We're gonna talk about it. Aspara, a dancing woman, 
or we have people very playful. They play some musical instrument or they do some offering to the god and to the goddess. And you will see that we have another statue over there. Of uh, it's believed that this is the statue of uh, of a woman, and but we don't really know the name though because without the head and with the woman like that, we cannot really identify who is it. But the other two, the other two elephant statue, it is it belongs to the Lord Ganesha, the son of Shiva, one of the most popular uh, idol in the Hindu mythology. So. Let's talk a bit about the gods and goddesses in Hinduism. All right, in the Hindu mythology, there are thousands and thousands of gods and idols and goddesses. But the main one, uh, we have the uh, in Hindu mythology, they have the three worlds. They have the three goddesses, and they have the three main gods known as the Holy Trinity. The first one, okay. So those three gods are Brahma. Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Well, unfortunately, we cannot type it down for you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat this name for you. All right, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Those are the God who create, the God who sustain the earth, and also the last one is the destroyer. So, I'm gonna go deeply into that, but first, but we're gonna stop a few seconds and take a look at this one. By looking at this statue, you will see that it's a woman. It's a form of a woman, and she wearing it's like an Indian clothes almost. But you see, because the Cham, the Cham Kingdom, they live an Indian way of life, and they are heavily influenced by the Indian culture. So that's why all their clothes and all the uniform is the Indian. And because they are almost like like a tribe at that time, that's why you see the top half. It tend to be naked like that, and that's a, a part of the culture at that time. Oh, thank you, Liz. You do us a very big flavor. This statue, however, surprisingly, it is actually the statue of a bodhisattva. So now, now you may wondering, why is it a statue of a bodhisattva? Then, because the Chamba Kingdom, they have the Hindu culture, right? And a bodhisattva, it related to Buddhism. So where does it come from? Where does Buddhism come from? Now, one of the explanation is that all the artifacts that are correct collected, it belong to a location called Mi Sơn, and Mi Sơn is it around thirty kilometers away from here. So you see, that's it, the most holy place in our country. It was like that for thousand and thousand of years. And the special thing about that place is that it is actually the border. The border between Vietnam and the Chamba Kingdom, between Vietnam and the Chamba Kingdom, which is even though we are neighbor at that time, but we follow very different philosophy, and our religious belief system is very different as well. The Vietnamese, our root is in the East Asian culture, you see. So we are similar to the Chinese, the Japanese, and the Korean, and we follow Buddhism. Mostly Mahayana Buddhism, and the Cham they follow an Indian way of life, so they have Hinduism. But because we are neighbor, because we are neighbor at that time, so a part of Hindu, a part of Buddhism is slowly traveling to this country, to the central region, and that's why you see the Chamba, they also build the statue of the Bodhisattva, of the monk, and a lot of Buddhist uh, gods and goddesses as well. But it looked very different compared to our pagoda. For example, we have this one. You can see. Let me go from the bottom. This is what we call Ho Phap, Thang Ho Phap, the guardian, the god who is guarding by a security guy of the temple. And again, with the ruin, uh, the the hand they lost a part of the head is lost as well. But he is the guardian of. A Buddhist temple, actually. Oh, you are learning Mahayana Buddhism. Oh, that's great, Jen. That's the religion that eighty percent of the population in Vietnam are practicing right now. And again, with when I zoom in, all the details here, you can see 
different form of human beings those material the brick that are building this pedestrian and you see they are very thick and those brick at that time those are the red brick they said and they are considered to be superior compared to the normal one and the special thing is when they build this uh, statue uh, with bricks and temple there are no mortar in between so for some reason they make it stick together it is said that uh, they use uh, they use like a Why the English name again? Like the sticky part of the tree, of a cork tree, to stick the stone and the brick together like that. Yeah, like a sap list. <laughs> again, thank you for reminding me, for reminding me of this words. And this is the statue of an arhat. Arhat is like a monk, but he is fully enlightened, fully enlightened, and he is here to protect Buddhism like that. So spring, <laughs> so spring just walk around the museum to turn on the light, and right now we're gonna show you the detail of this of another god of guardian. All right, wait, 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 see. You see, he's standing on a mystic beast, and this beast, can you guess what kind of animal is it? This may be a tricky question. Yeah, the hint is this is a traditional animal. Yeah, it's our national animal actually. Can you guess what kind of animal is it? Yeah, it is a carabao feet. Bingo. <laughs> you see, actually, you see, this is the bull. This is the bull, and he's standing on the bull like that. And when we zoom in the detail of his body, you can already see that he looks very fierce. He looked very kind of very angry and a bit aggressive in a way. He holding that assault, a weapons, and uh, the other hand, he also is uh, holding like a ropes. And normally there would be the serpent, the snake around his neck like that. Now, going with another one, another guardian, you can also see this one always look very angry with the guardian, and he also standing on a mystic beast. We cannot really identify this one, but we believe that this is like the shed of a bear, or something like that, like a beast. And he also has the serpent around his body, along with many form of weapon as well. It is not Brahma Bu actually, Ajahn. This is just a guardian of the temple. It's not Brahma. It's not Vishnu. It's not Shiva, like that. So, this area. This area that we are just talking about, 30 kilometers away from Da Nang, it is considered to be like a Buddhist center of Chamba Kingdom at that time. You see, and the images of worship here is actually bear the witness of the development of the Mahayana Buddhism in the Chamba Kingdom, and it's very uh, special again because you see, despite some of the Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Indian, and many other influences, you can still see that this sculpture and though, uh, those uh, I'm sorry, architecture of this place, it displays a very strong indigenous elements, which created a very unique and very impressive styles of Buddhist statues. So I'm gonna go this way a bit. <laughs> Spring just turn on the light. And you can see this is the statue of Gautama, the Buddha, the prophet of Buddhism, you may say. And he appeared around 2,600 years ago. So it is believed that they make this statue around the 10th century, the 10th century at that time. And there will be also a statue of the women around, uh, right next to the Buddha. Again, the head is removed. But we can pretty sure that that is the statue of Guang Yin, of the Lady Buddha, the goddess of compassion, you see? And interesting enough, over here, we also have the other statue, and we believe that those are the statue of the Bodhisattva, yes. a form of angel, you may say. He's standing on the lotus. Very good observation, Liz. Lotus. It is our national flower, and it is a symbol of transcendence. 
Buddhism and Hinduism actually have a lot of similarity considering Hinduism is a much older religion. It was there for like 7,000 years, uh, 7, years ago. And Buddhism, the Lord Buddha, Gautama, he actually got a lot of inspiration from Hinduism. So you will find commonality between the two religions. And then we have the Asbara, the dancing woman in the bottom. So, let's uh, say goodbye to this uh, Buddhist section of the, of the place. Right now, we're going to move to the main area where they display uh, all the Trinity gods and all the remaining artifacts of the museum. All right. So, So, the three gods, thanks to leave, uh, Shitabha, now you can take a look. Rama, Vishnu, and Shiva, the one who create, the one who sustained, and the destroy, respectively, like that. And what is more baffling is the, about this uh, triad is that the sustainer, Vishnu, and the destroyer, Shiva, they are worship, never the creator, never Brahma, you see? So uh, please give me just a few seconds. I'm going to turn on the light. Yeah. We're just asking the, the security guy here. Tricky pop, we are the only one today. So please wait for us for a few seconds. But anyhow, let's talk about block drama. Lord Brahma, he is not the creator. He is the creator of the entire universe, you see? And the thing is, he actually less popular. He is the least popular Trinity God in the modern day world. And uh, normally, as an image of him, you can see that he has five heads. However, one head, one head of Lord Brahma, it actually it was cut off by Lord Shiva, by the God of destruction. So normally forehead and no forehead, it represents the different aspects of Hinduism like that. So let's uh, take a look at this animal over here. Just a quick note about the beast as well. We have a lot of them in the, this museum. And, and the beast, the mystic animal, uh, I can say the mystic animal that you see, This is the Garuda. So the Garuda is like a lion, like a lion talons. And those, same thing, they function, they function as a guardian for the Hindu temple. You see, and over here, we have another Garuda, another guardian animal of the temple. So it is said that the Garuda is what devouring Naga. Naga is a king of serpent, like that. And it's have, actually, it's had a human body, but then it's have like animal, an animal, like a lion and a bird head, like that. And also looking very fierceless. So let me show you the quick picture of Lord uh, Brahma as well. Normally he's quite peaceful, He peaceful, And he does not have any weapon in his hands like that. But he holds, normally he holds a book, a rosary, or all the attributes of the wisdom. This is Asbara, the statue of the dancing woman. With this statue, it's very hard to, to notice. So I have saved the picture here. Allow, <laughs> please look at my phone a bit. This is the picture of Lord Brahma, one of the, one of the trinity, you see. And he very gentle, like this, holding the books, a rosary, like that. The second one in the Holy Trinity, we're going to show you all the ruins later on. But I want, I want to talk about the second one, would be Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu, he is known as the guardian god because he protects the earth. So you see, he protects our planet. And he also came to the earth in many different forms or avatars, we say, for a different roles. To, the, to sustain our creation. By looking at this beast, uh, we have a fun question for you. Can you guess what kind of animal are we seeing right now? 
So, what kind of animal? You can answer tin. <laughs> <laughs> It's a tricky one. Oh, Debbie. <laughs> Dragon. Bingo, Debbie. So again, look at look at the details, <laughs> all the bottom, from the bottom to the top, the bottom, and you see, ruined, very ruined with the moss and the feet. It also ruined a bit. But the dragon is the imperial symbol for the Chinese and for the Vietnamese, right? But this mythical animal, you can see that it's like a hybrid form of a dragon and a makara. A makara is like a sea monster. In the Indian mythology, and that's why you will see the the head is a dragon, and in the mouth, in the maw of the dragon, he's holding like a pearl, a precious stone like that. But then the body of the dragon is kind of look like a fish, because that's the idea from Makara, the sea monster. You see, so it's like a combination of two animal from the Indian culture and from the Chinese Vietnamese culture at the same time. So. Now, let take a look at some of the statue oh, of yes. the goddess. Pacific is dragon with a fish tail. Yeah, welcome back to the second tour. Then. So, Lok Vishnu, along with Lok Vishnu, you can see that he have a consort, a consort like a wife, we can say, and she is goddess Lakshmi. Lakshmi is the goddess of fortune. You see, Vishnu always go with Lakshmi. It tends to be like that. And normally, Vishnu he has four arms and a light blue skin. His hands it tend to hold like a lotus, a conch, a conch like a crustacean, like that. And then also he holding the wheel as well. So this is the statue of his wife, Lakshmi. So now we're gonna zoom in for you to have the, the detail as well. Again, it was built as around the fifth to the fifteenth century, and it was made by sandstone and clay and terracotta like that. And the one on the left, the one on the left, have more detail. And this is the statue of the goddess Sarasvati. So Sarasvati, she is the goddess of knowledge, of music and art. And actually, she is the wife or the consort of Lord Rama, the Lord of Creation. You see, so those are you see with the God, they always go with the goddess. Brahma go with Sarasvati, and Vishnu would go with Lakshmi. Now I'm gonna show you the colorful one. So if you go to the modern temple, let's say in India, or like uh, Sri Lanka. On the palm as well, you tend to see these kind of images. This is the image of Lord Vishnu, a very a kind of gentle as well, blue skin, and have a serpent around him, and he holding like a conch, a lotus flower like that, and he always have four arms. Now I'm gonna show you some feet. Well, this is impossible to identify. What kind of statue are we seeing right now? But uh, you can see. It's very big, very big with the feet like that. Our prediction is that this statue it belongs to Lord Shiva, the final one, the most important one. I would say the god of destruction. Now, let's move to our our next session. Let's say <laughs> big foot. <laughs> And I'm gonna show you his image first. This is the last god that we will talk about, Lord Shiva, and you see his wife. His wife, the goddess Parvati, and you see this is their son, Lord Ganesha. So, who is Shiva then? Shiva is considered to be the main god of the Hindu trinity or Trimurti. He, the one who remove all the evil, all the negative aspect of this planet. You see. And they see the statue of himself, of Lord Shiva. Again, you can see the the head is it removed. But why do we know that this is the Lord Shiva? The reason is that by looking at the body, you can see the clothes that he wearing. It is almost like the tribal clothes, and you can see the a tiny snake around his body as well. And therefore, 
This is the statue of Lord Shiva sitting on the pedestal. And in the bottom, you can see that we have the other god that holding the pedestal as well. So, he is the destroyer. And normally, as you see uh, in the image, he has a blue neck, always a blue neck. And he actually has three eyes. The third eye is on his forehead. And moreover, you can also see the goddess Parvati. He's always his constant uh, consult. And then they have two sons, like I mentioned. It is Ganesha and Katikaya. And they live in the Himalayas region. So one special thing about Lord Shiva is that you can see that he always moves when he go around the world. He moves on the Nandi. Nandi is a white bull. I'm, we're going to show it to you. The white bull. And actually this white bull, he is so revered and he revered separately. And you can also see a lot of Nandi sculptures with the offerings in the Hindu temple as well. So that's in the Hinduism trinity. And when talking about Hinduism at, at this period of time, during the 5th to the 15th century, you can see that it's not really a religion. It's not really an ism. You see, it's not Hinduism, but it's more like a geographical and it's more like a national identity in a way. Because everyone who was born in the land of Hindu is considered to be a Hindu. So, you see the god with three heads? Who is it then? It is Brahma, the god of creation. And because the Indian culture, they used to be one of the biggest empire in Asia at that time. So the charm, uh, a lot of country in Southeast Asia, when a person was born in the land of the, of the Indi Indian empire, we can say, they are considered to be the Hindu. And they can worship, they can worship a god, a goddess, an animal or anything. But their way of life is known as the Hindu way of life where they have a certain set of belief system and they are seeking for the ultimate. And now we're going to talk a bit about that as well. So, we have another pedestal of a woman riding the horse on the wheel. And you see, when talking about, about the Hindu, um, well, let's say common to virtually all Hindus are certain beliefs. And though included, a belief that, first of all, there are many gods and goddesses which are seen as a manifest manifestation of the single unity. So you see, these deity, deities, they are linked to the universal and the natural processes. And the second one, they would be like a, uh, like a preference, I can say, for one deity while not excluding or disbelieving the others. And the third one would be, they also believe that there is a universal law of cause and effect. And this is what we call karma and reincarnation. And finally, this is important. They also have a strong belief in the possibility of liberation. Liberation in what they call moksha by which the, uh, let's say, the endless cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, what we call samsara, can be resolved like that. So, let's stop by and talk about this one. Can you guess what kind of animal are we seeing right now? Very tricky. We seen them yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> with the statue from the 5th century, I think. It's not the frog actually married. Oh. Bingo, Liz. This is the monkey. So you may wonder why 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 monkey in a in a Hindu temple it has nothing to do with uh, the man god and the man goddesses right? But actually, this monkey that we are seeing right now, he also another god, and his name is Hanuman. Oh yes, Din Bingo. So Hanuman is actually very important because this one this statue it was found in the year of 1993, so pretty recent. And it found in Hoi An ancient town. But this is the divine monkey Hanuman. Is he one of the main characters of the Ramayana, one of the great Hindu epic? We're not gonna go into this today, but if you see any form of monkey in a Hindu temple, it tends to be Hanuman, one of the very important gods that the Hindu they worship. So 
This is, again, can you guess what kind of God are we seeing right now? Remember, we talk about the Trinity. Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. What kind of God are we seeing? I mean, what is the name of the God that we are seeing right now? Let me give you a hint. With four arms and with the color, he would have the light blue skin as well. Yes, Mary. Vishnu. Vishnu, the one who sustains the earth or the protector of the planet, we can say. Oh, happy birthday to to him, Jin. No no worry, no worry. And thank you for your supporting as well. <laughs> yeah. Please enjoy yourself. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> We're happy to have you all here today, actually. This is something that this ruin that you see for the whole country of Vietnam. This is the only museum that they display the artifacts. So this for us, for the Vietnamese and our government. They see this play as one of the national treasure in the country. So it's something very important for us. And we are happy to have you with us today to see these ruins that still remain. But it's actually, uh, it comes up right now. We're going to walk to the second floor. We're going to show you some of the clothes, some of the uniform that the charm used to wear. And we're going to wrap up the tour right there. All right. Yeah, we haven't shown you yesterday, uh, G uh, Dean, so you can enjoy it right now. But again, kind of similar to Buddhism, Hinduism, it, it, they see moksha. Moksha or liberation is like the ultimate spiritual goal of Hinduism. So how does one pursue the moksha then? Well, we know that it's very dark here, but please just slide with us for a few seconds, all right? Well, the goal here is to reach a point where you detach yourself from the feelings and from the perceptions that tie you to the world and then leading to the realization of the ultimate unity of things. So in a way, uh, the core philosophy of Hinduism would be we recognize that our soul, our soul is what we call the Atman. It would, in a way, connect it and merge into one with the universal consciousness. And that's what we call Brahman. This word Brahman, it means the universal consciousness. Please don't confuse them with the word Brahma, the God of creation, all right? And to get to this point, actually one can pursue through many different paths, or one can use many different techniques, we can say. So first we have the way of knowledge, which is known as Gani Yoga the path where Gautama, the Buddha, follow. And then we have the way of appropriate actions or works, and that's what we call karma yoga. And finally, we have the way of devotion, devotion to the God and to a form of worship, and that's what we call bhakti yoga. So, please give us a few seconds again. We're gonna... We're gonna... Run for the light, and we're gonna come back. All right. Ah, bé, bé đưa tôi bật nhanh hơn đó bé. Bé cầm nhìn tôi. Yeah, pass spring the gimbal so I can run. So those, uh, as you can see, those are the traditional clothes of the of the Cham people at that time. Look really cool. Uh, Spring and I, we know that it's over the time already, but we please stay with us for, let's say, for a few minutes. Yeah. And if you want to go, it's okay. We have covered all the information of the tour today. So if you have something to do, please feel free to leave the meeting. But if you want to stay, we will show you a few samples of the clothes yeah. and we're going to wrap up the tour. So thank you for all the tips. Thank you for all the support. Uh, please save our ebook. We have them on the very top of the chat. Please score up and save them so you can have our information. And, uh, and I'll see you in the next tour. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, tomorrow is really fun too. We want to uh, do like a trivia game for the fun tour tomorrow. It's uh, our first time. 
Yeah. So if you have uh, like uh, spare time, you can try us to play the game. And uh, we will have some gifts in that too as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or maybe on uh, on your Sunday. I mean, your time is on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> so let's continue with our exploration. Thankful. This is what we call Ka In. Ka In is the name. Very different from the Vietnamese one, you see. Vietnamese one, what are we wearing? We're wearing the ao dài, which is like a long, a long clothes. It's made out of silk, made out of silk. And normally, it comes with the white color because the white, it tends to stand for purity or transcendent, like that. And for the royal palaces, the royal family in Vietnam, we wear yellow, yellow color. But for this kingdom, the clothes that you see is more comfortable in a way. It doesn't make up silk, but it's much bigger as well. It's much wider, and it tends to be white or red. The thing is that Vietnamese, we don't really have the concept of a hat. And as you can see, we don't wear it in, in our tradition. We only wear the colonial hat when we walk in the farm. But for this part of the culture, they always have uh, something that they call... Uh, oh, again, I forget the word. Like... Uh, like a top, okay, I forgot the, the English, but yeah, it's like a headgear that they have it around their head, like that. Maduan is the name of the white clothes. Oh yes, they look uh, comfortable. Yeah, much, like much more comfortable compared to our traditional clothes. <laughs> right, it's good for Vietnamese uh, weather, Vietnam weather, yeah. So this one is a pajur. The one for the men. And this one is a katha, I said. Well, keep in mind that uh, our weather, you see, is very hot and, and humid. But <laughs> at this time, at this period of time, it's not our country. It's in another country. The Vietnamese, well, we, in our history, we said that we are, we were expanded our territory, you see. But basically, we annexed them. There used to be a lot of wars. Eventually, we win. And when we win, the culture of the Cham, the Hinduism way of life, it's fading away. It's declining. So, that's the part of the history. And now you can say these are the indigenous people of the country of Vietnam. Sam has talked about the Chamba wars on his tours too, I see. I have enjoyed that tour actually, Liz, with Sam in Angkor Wat. But uh, we, we have, we, the Vietnamese, we did have many big wars with the Cham Kingdom and also with the Khmer Empire as well. And uh, from our perspective, from the Vietnamese perspective, we did the right thing, you see, we simply expanded our territory. But I'm sure that, let's say, for the Cambodian, from the Khmer perspective, or from the of course, from the Cham perspective, they may think very, very differently. Footwear, well, surprisingly, Heather, this is very surprisingly. Footwear at that time, it, uh, you can see it's like a basic sandal, but most of them, they walk bare feet in that culture. So they walk bare feet, and there's a reason behind it as well. They believe that if they walk bare feet, say like on the, on the farm or on the road, then the feet, the skin, it will absorb the positive energy on the earth as well. So that's the, the form of footwear is very basic, but they actually don't display them in this museum though. Those are the, the zodiac animal, the 12 zodiac animal. That's also very inspired from this part of the culture, from the Vietnamese as well. And this is the place where they make pancake. You see the one, in the bottom is for pancake and the two other one is simply for the herbal medicine or for the water like that so this is the teapot teapot any accessories like earrings or necklaces perhaps i don't know about that then i don't see i don't see those things but i'm sure that the women at that time they have to be some something for the beauty of it, you know, something for, for the, um, what, what you call the necklace and earrings. There has to be something like that, I believe. So. 
Wrong question. It's a symbol of a Hindu temple at that time. Oh. And Spring and I, we actually we used to come there in one of our ruin tour. It's a well, one hour ride from here. Yeah. And this is the Bukok, the place where they used to walk on the farm. Like that. They had a ceramic collection of zodiac in miniature size as well. Oh, that's how great Dunia. What is it then? This is the symbolism of Om. Om is the first source of the universe, you can say. In Hinduism, the source, the south Om, it derived, it originated from the ancient Indian Sanskrit language. And the south is in blue. The vowel sound of the word A, U, and M. So with A, U, and M, we have the sound Om. It's a sacred, sacred sounds, and they are used in different form of chanting, uh, chanting in Buddhism and Hinduism. So, <laughs> right now, are you re referring to Michelle? Yeah, we we used to travel to Michelle yeah. for the ruined temple. Actually, we did. Yeah, two hours away from this city. Yeah, we did it a uh, few months ago. Well. When spring dry, it's like one hour or something, <laughs> I, I think. Two hours, okay. Anyhow. Spring, she dry, when she dry, it's may, maybe even faster than the flash for some reason, you know, but... Make my dry scare <laughs> me too. <laughs> right? Yeah. Thank you, Elise. Uh, we're going to take just a quick look at the chat, all right? And we're going to end the tour very soon. Uh, you said the same okay. you, the tour, that your countries are friends now. Cambodian and Vietnamese are friends now. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> Let me tell you a secret. Actually, the Cambodian and the Vietnamese, you know, in Southeast Asia, we, we are very good friends now. But these two countries, we tend to have like a beef to each other. That's our secret. And because of the, <laughs> of the Khmer and of the, of the Khmer Rouge and of the Red Khmer, Whoa, like that. Thank you, Junior. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Anna. I don't think we have any questions today. There's the spring, we know, spring into action. <laughs> You're so funny, Jin. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. <laughs> Thank you, Emily and Liz for all the tips, for all the support. Yeah. And no more questions today. So again, if you're new, please save our ebook. And if not, we will have more tours coming in yes. uh, in a new city after the quarantine and next week as well. We will have a few more ones. So. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. We wish you a lot of luck in life. A lot of luck. We wish you always have all the prosperity in life, all the money, a lot of money as well. And we wish that whatever you do in life is always go in harmony. It always go in harmony, always smooth. And like usual, we're going to walk for around one minute in silence before we end, before we finish the tour. So, yeah. Thank you, Jin. So if you have the time in this afternoon, Singapore time, you can play the game with us. Okay. Well, thank you, Debbie. You enjoy every hour tour. Thank you, Anna. Oh, Avin. <laughs> Avin, is, you are touring in, the, yeah. in Singapore, right? Eh? You Am have, I right? You have like the, the cool house. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alvin, well, feel free to pass down your, your information and everything here, Alvin. Yeah, we don't mind. And uh, you do tours in Singapore, you can pass them down for more people to know it. But cool. if you have enjoyed Alvin. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's streaming different tours in Singapore, our neighboring country. Yeah, new star on Haigo. So... One minute in silence, like usual. <laughs> Asian. <laughs> <laughs>